What's up everyone, I'm Dr. Morris and this is Real Chemistry and today we're gonna to be talking about line angle structures. These are a shortcut way to draw molecules and they look pretty fancy. So here's a line angle structure right here and if you look at this you wonder like what is all of this that's going on and why aren't there atoms everywhere? There should be more atoms in a molecule and instead we just see these lines at angles, what's going on there? Well in this lesson we'll talk through just what those line angle structures mean and how to understand them. Okay, first up, why do we need them? Well, organic molecules are big and they contain lots of carbon. So because they contain the same atom over and over and over again, we basically just get sick of drawing it. So here, notice we've repeated carbon, 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 carbon. And besides carbon, there's just tons of hydrogen. So there's four carbons and 10 hydrogens on this molecule. And this is actually a relatively small organic molecule. So what that means is we'd like to come up with some shorthand way to represent the same thing. Before we get started, two really important rules for you to know. One is that carbon always wants to have four bonds. So carbon needs four bonds. Notice here, if I look at our first carbon, it has one bond to another carbon. And then it has one, two, three bonds to hydrogen, adding up to four. Or let's take one of the carbons in the middle, let's take this guy, Notice it has one, two bonds to other carbons. And since it needs four bonds, it's gonna have two hydrogens off of it, one and two. Okay, so that's the first thing to keep in mind is carbons need four bonds. And most of the time, those bonds are gonna be either other carbons or hydrogens. Now, what about for hydrogen? Hydrogen needs one bond. And that's another important thing to remember. Hydrogen just needs one bond and it's totally happy. So keep those in mind as we take a look at line angle structures. All right, let's take a look at this exact same molecule drawn as a line angle structure. So the top molecule and the bottom molecule are butane, the same exact organic molecule. And we've drawn on the bottom our line angle structure. And the trick with these line angle structures is that every single time you see an endpoint like that, or a vertice like that where it changes directions, that represents a carbon atom. So here's one, two, three, four carbon atoms, just like there was one, two, three, four up top. You'll also notice we haven't drawn the hydrogens. And basically, we're just being lazy here. We don't want to write 10 hydrogens. And so what we're going to do is we're going to let people figure out how many hydrogens are there. We're going to make them remember that carbon needs four bonds and hydrogen wants one, and that any bonds not shown here are going to be filled in with hydrogen. So we just completely don't write the hydrogen. Okay, let's look at those rules explicitly written out. Two rules. Endpoints and vertices of every line is a carbon. And hydrogens aren't shown. Instead, the number of hydrogens is implied by however many we need to get four. Let me show you what I mean. Let's look at this first carbon again, right here. We see that we have one bond going to another carbon. So there's one of our bonds. Well, if we need four bonds, then how many hydrogens must we have? We already have one. So then we need two, three, four bonds, all going to hydrogen to total up to four. Okay, so that means even though I don't show those three hydrogens on this far left carbon, it has three hydrogens. And again, if I look at one of these middle carbons, let's say this one, I'll notice it has one, two bonds to other carbons. So how many hydrogen bonds must it have to get to four? Another one, two. So these line angle structures are just a really lazy way to draw organic molecules where we represent every single carbon atom as an endpoint or vertice, and we don't show the hydrogens. Okay. Let's practice this. So here we have, have the question, how many carbons are on the structure below? At first, this, this can look a little challenging, and after you do it for a little while, it gets quite easy. So here, all we're gonna do is count the endpoints and vertices. And you'll notice there's a ton on this molecule, right? So we have one, two, three, four, and if you want, why don't you go ahead and pause the video and give it a try yourself, finishing out however many there are. So there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So there's 11 carbons on that molecule. Think about drawing that molecule without the line angle structure. It would be a real pain. In fact, you're gonna to get to a point in your study of organic chemistry where you're like, man, if you make me draw that expanded structure, I am gonna lose my mind. Nobody wants to do it. It just takes way too long, okay? So we've counted the carbons there. We decided there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So 11 total carbons. All right, let's practice again. How many carbons are in this structure? Now here we've added a new element, both literally an element from the periodic table and a new element as in a new aspect, <laughs> okay? So here we have bromines. 
And this changes things just a little bit. If there's another atom shown on the end of one of those lines, then there's not a carbon there, okay? So that's an important caveat. If another atom is shown on the end, then it's not a carbon. So when we count the carbons here, we're gonna count one, two, three, four, five. So there's five carbons. You might want to set, count this guy and this guy, but those are not carbons. That's just a bromine. Okay, this is gonna be a very common mistake you'll make as you write these structures, is you'll count those as carbons, but those aren't carbons because we've shown a bromine. So if we're not drawing carbon or hydrogen, we're gonna explicitly show the element. Okay, so that means if we show nitrogen, we're gonna put an N. If we show oxygen, we're gonna put an O. If we show bromine, we're gonna put Br. So the only elements we don't show are carbon and hydrogen, okay? And here we have five carbons. Let's keep practicing. All right, here we're asked to draw the expanded structure of the following molecule. So now we have the line angle structure, and one way to demonstrate that you understand how these structures work is to go from this to the expanded structure. Now here's the trick, you wanna start with the carbons. And in the line angle structure we have these angles, because it's called a line angle structure, right? You don't need to draw those angles when you draw your expanded structure. So instead, we're just gonna count the carbons and we're gonna start there. We're gonna start with the carbons. We know we have one, two, three, four carbons. That's not a carbon, okay? It is an endpoint on a line, but there's bromine draw there, drawn there. So that's bromine, not a carbon. All right, so that means we have four carbons. So I'm gonna start just by drawing four carbons. I'm gonna draw them in a straight line. Okay? Now, after my carbons, I'm gonna go ahead and fill out any other element that's explicitly listed. So in this case, bromine is shown up there. So I'm gonna add bromine. You'll notice it's on this third carbon, right? So here we have one, two, three, four carbons, and the third carbon has the bromine. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on that same carbon right here. Okay, now I have to fill in the hydrogens. So let's start on the far left, all right? I count the number of bonds. I have one carbon-carbon bond. So how many hydrogen bonds do I need to get to four? Well, I have one, so then I need to add one, two, three. And you do have to draw the hydrogen. Some people like to just leave the hydrogens off, but if you're drawing the expanded structure, you need the hydrogens. If you're drawing the line angle structure, you shouldn't draw the hydrogens. Okay, let's go to the next carbon. This one has one, two carbon-carbon bonds. So how many hydrogen bonds does it need? Well, to get to four, it needs two more bonds, so two more hydrogens. And eventually you won't even have to count. You'll just know, hey, this carbon is one that has two other carbon bonds, so it's gonna have two hydrogens. Now we'll go to the third carbon. Here, it has one, two, three bonds. So if it has three bonds, how many more does it need to get to four? One more, pretty tough math. Luckily, organic chemistry might be hard, but there's not much math in it. And we know that three plus one gives us our four. Last carbon, notice once again, it's a terminal carbon. That means it's a carbon that comes at the end. So just like the other end, right over here, it's gonna end up having three hydrogens to get it to the total of four. So we'll add three hydrogens. So that's the expanded structure there of our line angle structure. So you should be able to go back and forth between line angle and expanded structure. Let's do a, two more practice problems where we count carbons and hydrogens. Okay, for this one, count the number of carbons in each of the molecules below. All right, the left-hand one, pretty straightforward. One, two, three, four, five. So five carbons. Not too bad at all. The right hand one gets a little more challenging. First of all, we have to remember the bromine endpoints. Those don't count as carbons, right? So that's not a carbon. So this is a carbon right there, and this is a carbon. And then you're like, oh wait, what, what is that? Oh snap. Well, you might remember that if we have expanded structures, we sometimes have double bonds. For example, in this expanded structure. Same thing's true here. In line angle structure, we sometimes have double bonds. And the way we represent that is just with an extra line. And so what that is, is a double bond. A couple things are important here. That means it counts as two bonds when we're thinking about how many bonds do those carbons have. The double bond counts as two bonds because it's two. And that line doesn't have carbons on the end of it. Let me show you what I mean. So here's a carbon and here's a carbon. But this point right here, that doesn't count because that's just part of the double bond and neither does that one, okay? So it has one, two, three, four, five. What do you think about this one? Is that a carbon? No, it's not a carbon. We have a bromine written right there. So once again, this one has five carbons. So basic point there, right, is that if I see this double line thing, the double bond, there's just one carbon on each end, okay? So that's counting the carbons in those two molecules. All right, now, same two molecules, last practice problem, we're gonna count the hydrogens. 
Again, the left one is relatively easy. You might even start to recognize the patterns by now. This blue one right here that I've highlighted in blue is an end point, right? And so that means it has three hydrogens on it to add up with this one bond to get a total of four. Now, if you need to go more slowly, that's totally great, right? Just say, okay, there's a carbon, one bond, and then I need one, two, three. So there's a total of three hydrogens there. So I'm gonna put just three H there. What about for this one? Well, it has two bonds, one, two. So it needs two hydrogens to get it to a total of four. What about this carbon? Well, this carbon has one, two, three bonds. So it needs just one more hydrogen to get to four. So we got one hydrogen there. This is another terminal carbon where it shows up at the end. And so that means that we need three hydrogens there. And here, once again, terminal carbon, three hydrogens. So how many total? Three, six, nine, 10, 11, 12. So 12 total hydrogens on this molecule. All right, this one's a little harder. Again, let's just start by highlighting our carbons. This one, terminal carbon, needs three hydrogens. No problems there. This one has one, the bromine bond counts, two, three. So that means we're gonna need one extra hydrogen there. Now we get to our double bonds. So this one has one, two, three bonds on it already. So notice I counted this double bond as two bonds because it's a double bond. So since it has three bonds going to that point, there needs to be one more hydrogen. On this side, same thing. It has one, two, three bonds, and so it needs one more hydrogen. All right, let's clear this space up a little bit. This has one hydrogen. And then right here, once again, we have one, two bonds, so two total hydrogens there. The endpoints, remember, next to the bromine aren't carbons, they're bromines, that's why we drew a BR. All right, so now let's add up the total number of hydrogens. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this molecule has eight hydrogens. So those are line angle structures. Ask any questions you got below.